Think of some people close to you. Think of someone who, at some point you started noticing, didn't see themselves. Maybe they seemed nervous, sad, distracted, or angry. You might have been one of the few people in their lives who sensed this about them, even though they had seen this with you for quite some time. Now, think of someone else, a loved one who many others around you are worried about, not just you. How would you know if your loved ones could use help from a therapist? How would a therapist help? And can science answer questions like these? I'm a professor of psychology, and in my laboratory, we probe how scientists use facts to answer questions about mental health. Scientists get a lot of practice learning about the complex paths each of our mental health stories take. Scientists learn by listening to our stories, but they can't just hear what we have to say. Their work requires precision, and so they follow a strategy. They administer tests that pull facts from the stories. When we started, I asked you to think about your loved ones. It turns out that scientists rely on people like us to advocate for our loved ones, to serve as informants who provide facts on some of their tests. As a scientist learns more, the facts begin to tell stories of their own. These stories inform estimates, a scientist's best answers to questions about mental health. Some stories allow scientists to make estimates of the rates of diagnoses like anxiety, depression, or disruptive behavior. Other stories allow scientists to make estimates of the effects of therapies for those who receive them. To make their estimates, scientists use lots of tests. After all, we can't see a diagnosis like depression. So, scientists detect diagnoses the best ways they know how, by testing for signs and symptoms of their presence. These are behaviors like avoiding social situations, difficulty sleeping, and destroying property. Each diagnosis includes many symptoms, and each symptom can be difficult to detect. So, anytime you've seen rates of diagnoses like anxiety, depression, or disruptive behavior, those are just estimates. Those estimates can change depending on the test. This also goes for anything that we think enhances our mental health, like improving our social skills, rethinking how we react to stress, and building a healthy relationship with a the therapist. All this means that when scientists test for any one thing, like anxiety or social skills, we do so in many ways. Surveys, interviews, brain scans, lab tests, behavioral tasks, passive data from mobile devices. Scientists have designed creative ways to collect facts about mental health. But this creates new problems to solve. Our creativity produces this vast ocean of facts. So let's think of these facts like fish in the sea. With all that fish, where do you focus? Historically, the answer to this question has been seemingly straightforward. Focus on the fish who swim in schools. Look for facts that tell the same story. The two studies that both detect benefits and a new treatment for depression. The parent, teacher, and therapist who all agree that a teen needs help with completing chores at home and doing well at school. Let's just say that the only facts that matter are those that tell the same story. This is what scientists call an assumption that the only truths are found in schools of fish. But for this assumption to make sense, we must live in a world where the only valuable facts are the ones that tell the same story. What if our reality doesn't fit this assumption? Scientists estimate that about a quarter of all fish species swim in schools for their whole lives, and about half swim in schools for at least a part of their lives. If scientists had a way to accurately detect every school of fish in the sea and stop there, then the majority of fish species would go undiscovered. In the same way, 60 years of science revealed that in mental health, we might be mistaken if we assume that the only truths are found in schools of fish. In mental health, we can think of the fish who swim in schools as the times when the facts all tell the same story. The studies of a therapy that all say it works. The different tests that produce the same results about someone's mental health. We can think of the fish who swim alone as the times when the facts tell different stories. One study found a therapy worked, but the other study didn't. 
Different tests produce distinct results about someone's mental health. Maybe these distinct stories aren't worth hearing, but that wouldn't fit with the facts or common sense. If our mental health stories follow complex paths, then we probably don't behave the exact same way at home, school, work, parties, sporting events, we go to those, comedy shows, if that's our thing. Each of these places produce expectations. What we expect of those places and what people in those places expect of us. And another thing, if different stories aren't worth hearing, does that mean that each test a scientist uses isn't valuable? <laughs> Tell that to the scientists designing a new test. They design it precisely because it collects facts that other tests don't. So, if a scientist's job produces this vast ocean of facts, then what if there's a method to this vastness? To answer this question, let's take a closer look at how scientists do their jobs. Scientists collect facts using groups of tests called batteries. These batteries of tests contain questions about how we think, feel, and behave. Do you enjoy meeting new people? Does your child have difficulty concentrating? What are your hobbies? The answers to these questions are facts about mental health, but the tests don't complete themselves. Informants answer these questions. And scientists are just as strategic about their informants as they are about their tests. The informants are everyday people. They're the significant others in our mental health stories. They, too, have stories to tell. Let's take the mental health of children and adolescents as an example. Their significant others include parents and teachers. Parents and teachers vary from each other in where they observe children and adolescents. These differences are the origins in the stories informants tell. The parent who reports their child behaves disruptively, but the child's teacher disagrees. The teacher who reports a student in their class needs help with anxiety, but the child's parent disagrees. The child who reports they struggle with depression, but adults at home and school disagree. Hundreds of studies attest to these disagreements. Here are some examples. When scientists design therapies, they often focus on specific mental health conditions. And studies about these therapies rely on informants for facts about their effects. Therapy effects are like bars in these charts. The longer the bar, the bigger the effect. As you can see, informants tell very different stories about therapy effects. For depression, the story told by teachers is about a therapy that makes things worse, even though other informants tell opposite stories. This all has to do with how facts overlap. Think of these circles as two informants. The fish who swim in schools swim where the circles overlap, where informants tell the same story. The fish who swim alone are swimming everywhere else, where informants tell different stories. Since the 1950s, scientists have been studying how often these facts overlap, and their studies tell a very consistent story. We see little overlap in the stories informants tell about mental health symptoms, and for people of all ages. These are the symptoms that scientists use to make diagnoses and detect who might benefit from therapy. We can't just discount these differences or say they don't count as facts. Science helps us probe these differences. Science helps us answer the question about whether there's something valuable in the unique stories informants tell. Informants also tell different stories about things like parenting, social skills, and the relationships that are bonds between clients and therapists. These stories are important because things like building relationships in therapy and improving your social skills are often the active ingredients in the therapies we receive. What if scientists rely on these kinds of facts to answer questions about mental health? Why do I mention this question? If scientists rely on just the facts that overlap, just the schools of fish, they only use about 5% of the facts available to them. This forces each and every one of us to live in a world where nearly all mental health facts go to waste. Nearly all fish remain undiscovered. Can scientists rethink how they learn from facts?
in the early 2000s, a statistician at Stanford, Helena Kramer, had an idea. Informants are like satellites within a global positioning system, or GPS. What if you were to use a GPS to locate fish? A GPS would have relied on the satellite closest to the fish. A GPS is an array of satellites. Each satellite is placed in a distinct point in space to form a triangle on the fish. This triangle allows a GPS to lock it on their location. That each satellite is in a distinct point in space is not a flaw of the system. These differences are by design. And this design helps locate fish of all kinds, whether they're in schools or all alone. Earlier, we learned about the creative ways that scientists use to collect facts about mental health. If scientists use valuable tests and they rely on uh, strategically selected formants, then all of these facts play a role in learning about mental health. With a quick survey, informants can produce facts we can count on. Scientists can administer surveys all over the world. And this allows them to treat informants like satellites who can locate all kinds of fish. But we can't just pick good satellites. Our task isn't complete if we don't catch fish as well to verify the stories informants tell. With the right battery of tests, we can do just that. For 15 years, my lab has designed these batteries of tests, and they include a second set of tests. These tests are like the fishing nets we use to catch schools of fish and the lures we use to catch fish to swim alone. But a question remains, what's the payoff with catching fish to swim alone? Work from my laboratory mirrors what we see in nature. Our batteries of tests catch schools of fish from time to time, but the fish who swim alone, the facts that tell different stories, account for the largest amount of fish worth catching. So, we need both fishing nets and fishing lures. Fishing nets help us detect when we behave in similar ways, at home, school, work, parties, wherever. Fishing lures allow us to detect when we behave in specific ways, depending on where we are. And scientists need both kinds of facts. Together, they help each of us tell our own mental stories. If we knew where we experienced challenges, then scientists can adapt the therapies they designed to give us each our own strategies, to meet our own challenges. Batteries of tests that include satellites, fishing nets, and fishing lures produce facts that empower us and give scientists the facts they need to design versatile therapies to give each of us a chance to live the healthiest lives we can. This game-changing strategy has also been applied to how families function, human development, child maltreatment, suicide risk, education, and clinical neuroscience. A focus on facts, whether the stories match up or not, allows scientists to learn more about who we are than ever before. By focusing on all kinds of fish in the sea, we can set our sights on vast oceans of mental health facts waiting to be discovered.